Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Amen. Our lesson text is coming from the book of Luke, Luke the 13th chapter, and the verses were 29 and 30. This is part two that the Lord is still calling. Amen. Part two of the Lord is still calling. Let's get into this. The scripture reading for those that have may have just come in and missed it says, and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last. We know that Jesus went and walked the thing up and basically this whole lesson here in the 13th chapter of Luke was to get the people's mind prepared and to repent. The whole 13th chapter of Luke basically is dealing with taking a self-inventory and repenting. And so when we get down to uh, those final verses in that chapter, when he says in verse 34, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and ver verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until that time when ye shall say, Blessed is he, that's so much better, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now our lesson this morning is going to come from the book of James. I've been trying to get us to the book of James. Amen. And so as we <clears throat> went through that whole series last month, and then I, um, I preluded it, I was intending to get to James on last Sunday, but when I really looked at chapter 13 of Luke, it, it, it is a, a, a prelude to get to the book of James. So now, what is going on here? From when, As we're walking this up from the Old Testament, coming all the way through, we know that Jesus has been holding their hand all the way through. And God has been right there with us, helping his children all the way through. And so when it went through the Old Testament dispensation and Moses' leadership and so forth, and then Jesus comes on the scene. We know that John the Baptist was a forerunner before Christ, and John told them to repent for the kingdom of heaven, which is synonymous with the church of Christ, is at hand. Amen. We know that the church of Christ has been prefigured in every dispensation. From the patriarchal dispensation, it was prefigured from Adam and Eve, Noah and the ark. It was prefigured in the Mosaic dispensation with Moses and the wilderness. And it came into fruition when Christ Jesus, the Son of God, came to the earth and to save mankind. And he told all of us to get in the church of Christ. So you can read about the church of Christ while it was in heaven. We can read about it when it came down from heaven, when it came down here to the earth. And we can see it prefigured throughout every major age. And it is now in place in the last days dispensation, which is the Christian era or age or dispensation. So the church of Christ is on the scene now. So he was trying to get the children that he was leading from the Old Testament all the way up to the New. And so for those who have ignorantly, and I say that with respect, have accepted a denominational way of worship, I'm saying with all love in my heart, you've accepted something that is not according to the scripture. Yes. And, 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 and if I were to ask you the question, can you not only find your church in the Bible, if I were to ask you, can you find your church prefigured in heaven? Amen. If I were to ask you, can you find your church in the Garden of Eden? Right. If I ask you, can you find your church in the Old Testament in the wilderness right. that came through the Red Sea? Can you find your church? Yeah. And then if we come over to the New Testament, right. can you find your church in the New Testament from really from Acts to the book of Revelation is when the New Testament era officially began when Jesus, of course, he lived, he died, he, and he rose again. Right. And so therefore, when the gospel was preached, now Jesus came on the scene and said, upon this rock, I will build what? My, My church. church. Not a Catholic church. Right. Not a Church of England. Right. Not a Lutheran church. Right. Not 
a Baptist church, right. not a Methodist church, not an Episcopalian church, Presbyterian church, Jehovah's Witness church, Mormon church. Look at all of that confusion and nonsense. Right. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Personal. It is of distinction. Right. It is that treasure that was hidden in a field. It is that pearl of great price. Yes. His church, his group of people. Now, we know that when he came to his people, when he came down here to the earth, right. he was teaching them, and John was telling them to prepare for the church of Christ is at hand. Right. Jesus came and said, as I've quoted already, I'm going to build my church. When they killed him, when they crucified him and nailed him to the cross, the Bible says that they were in uh, one place on one accord and the Holy Spirit came in as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house of where they were sitting. Right. And the Bible lets us know that when you come on down that Peter standing up with the eleven went on and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. The people he then told them to repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins Amen. and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he kept kept on preaching. And the Bible says, and they had all things in common. And, and then it says, and they continued in steadfastly in one accord or in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayer. And when you get down to verse 47, the Bible says that they were praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church of Christ daily, such as should be saved. Now, when the church of Christ came into existence, we know that Satan got on his horse and he used an ignorant man, an eloquent man, an educated man, a doctor of the law. But his name was Saul at the time, who after his conversion, his name changed to Paul. Amen. Paul, before his conversion in Acts chapter 8 and 9, he went wreaking havoc throughout the churches of Christ, and he was causing men to be killed and blasphemed and held them into prison. And so when the Lord had enough of his nonsense, he was heading to Damascus to go and bind men and women who called upon the name of the Lord. Right. And when he was going that way, he was encountered by the Lord with a bright light in the Bible says, and he fell to the ground. And he called out and he said, Lord, who art thou? And he said, it's Jesus whom thou persecutest. And Paul, had, as Saul at that time, had enough sense to ask the Lord, what would you have me to do? You know, you ought to have some sense at some point in your life to, to realize, to ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do? Who, who, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, who you persecuted. Now, but here's, here's the thing for these folks who, who claim to get these revelations and so forth, that they were out in the pea field, in the cotton field, and got a sign to go pick or, or to go preach. And, and you heard this joke about the man that was out there and he looked up in the uh, clouds and he saw some clouds that, that said GP. And, and he said, mama, that's my sign to go and preach. And we know the story there. The mama said, oh boy, that, that means go pick. Get back out there in that field. <laughs> but these people who are claiming that they've received all these signs and revelations and so forth. Here, here's the deal through, through when they were out in a field somewhere. When we read the scripture, we see that that wasn't the way that God worked with Saul. Amen. God did meet Saul on the Damascus road, and he did not save him there. Right. <clears throat> he had to go on down and find the preacher because preachers were commissioned now since his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. And he had to go on down there and get baptized. And when he got baptized, the Bible lets us know that his sins were washed away. Amen. Calling. That's true biblical calling. Yes. Calling on the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Now, from that time, I'm showing you. I'm still in James. I'm going to get to James today. But I want you to understand the context and flow right. as we get to James. Right. Now, so when we understand, <clears throat> excuse me. When you understand the context of what I've been teaching you in these series of God's people, leading them and taking them by the hand, right. 
Now you're going to better understand James. Now, the church is in existence, but Paul had told everybody that people were going to fall away. They were going to break away from the church of Christ in Romans 16, 16 through about 19, and also in Acts chapter 20, and then 28 through about 30, uh, 31 or so. You'll see where he pre prophesied that a falling away was going to take place. Now, when this falling away took place, we know that the promise of what I shared in the last lesson <clears throat> that people were going to be scattered. <clears throat> Paul scattered some of them in Acts chapter 8 and 9. Yes. And then the Lord promised that they were going to be scattered all throughout the nations in Luke chapter 19 and also chapter 20 and 21. Just get it all. <clears throat> now, so here is the love of the Lord right here in the book of James. Mm -hmm. He is still calling. Amen. Jesus is still calling. Amen. In verse 1, the Bible says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let no man, or let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let me pause there. So now, God has, the church is on the scene. The people have been scattered all over. Look at the love of God. He's still concerned about his people. Yes, he is. And he has James to write a letter to those that have been scattered all throughout. And he's letting them know <clears throat> for the faithful ones that have been scattered as well, he's letting them know, listen, I love you. I understand what you are going through, but I want you to know that you are going to encounter tribulations, you're going to encounter persecutions and so forth, but, but let it have its perfect work. Right. In other words, let it have its complete work. Right. Let it have its entire work. Yes. What are you saying, Jesus, by the right of that? What are you saying, let it have its perfect work? Well, oftentimes, <laughs> We want everything to be rosy and peachy. Right. We want it to be a sunny day and right. howdy howdy. Right. And apple pie. And, and I do too. Yes. But just living in this life in which we live in. It's not going to be that way. Amen. It would be nice if everybody would treat you fairly. It would, right. be. It would be nice if the valleys were already brought low. Right. It would be nice if every mountain and Heal, rather, was brought low and every valley was already exhausted. <laughs> but you're going to have to run into some stormy days. Yes. You see, you're going to have to run into some, some thunderstorms every now and then. You're going to have to run into some trials and tribulations and heartaches and headaches and people mistreating you and, and just people just being unfair. You're going to run into it. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to have to, have to deal with your body yes. because the body is in decline. When we were in our young days, and the Bible said we were just like a, 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 a flower which comes forth and it blooms, but after it comes forth and blooms, it starts to wither away. That's what the Bible says about our old temples that we are in, this body of our earthly house, of this tabernacle, we're dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
This old body is decaying. It's going back to the earth from whence it came. But the spirit is going to go back to the Lord who gave it. And so therefore, while we are here on this side of life, I just want to encourage all of my brothers and sisters. I want to encourage all of those 12 tribes which have been scattered throughout the nations to just know, to count it all joy. Yes. Count it all joy. Amen. When you fall into divers temptations, yes. knowing this, that the trying of your faith is going to work some patience. Yes. And you see, let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. James, what are you trying to get the church to see about this? Because it is by experiences that we all grow. Yes. The things that we know at the age of 50, we didn't know when we were 40. Right. The things we know at 40, we don't know at 30. Right. The things at 30, we didn't know at 20. Right. And then that number can go on up for those that are in the house. We have some in here that are almost 90. Right. And so you can even attest right. that the things you knew from 50, you learned more at 60. Right. You came to know more at 70. Right. You learned even some more at 80. Right. And, and when you hit 90, you're going to look back and say, Lord, I didn't know that. Amen. I've learned some more. Right. Amen. So it is by experiences that we grow. And the Lord knows that none of us are going to volunteer for tough time. Right. There's a tough time ahead, Greg. No, God already knows that Greg is not going to raise right. his hand. I'm talking about the flesh. Right. I'm talking about the flesh. Right. Greg is not going to volunteer and say, Lord, put me through everything but heaven. Right. I want to go through it. Right. No, sir. That's not the way the, the human spirit works. Right. It doesn't work that way. But here's the love of God. Yes, God knows that working out is uncomfortable. And the working out I'm talking about, I'm not talking about physical working out. Right. I'm talking about the working out of your faith. Right. This is what the Lord is talking about here. We're going to have to work you out. Right. I know you don't want to get up early in the morning and do some exercises and stretches. I want you to stay with me in the text. Right. I'm using an allegory. I'm using sim sim symbolism. I want you to stay with me. Yes. We already know. God already knows that I don't want to get up at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and go run five miles. He already knows I don't want to do two, three, four hundred push-ups. He already knows that I don't want to have to go through all of this. But but a heavenly trainer. Right. We have a certified trainer. Right. right. Spiritual balance. Personal trainer. Right. That's going to wake us up and shake us up. Right. And when we go through these experiences, oh, it may be a little discomfort. Comfort, yeah. it may be uncomfortable. Right. But the, the more God continues to pull you through these experiences, mm. you start to realize that you have some muscle developing. Right. right. And, and, and it's not talking about physical muscle. Right. It's talking about spiritual yeah. muscle. Yeah. Right. You see the things that caused you to go off track yesterday Amen. because of the experiences that God has who's a certified trainer right. has brought us through. Right. You 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 find now. That that's just a, a net that you thump off of you now. Amen. You don't even pay what used to trip you up yesterday, no mind. Right. It's not because of us. It's because God brought us through some, some training and some exercises and some ex and, and experiences to get us over the hump. Right. And so this is what he's saying here. Count it all joy. Yeah. See, when you understand what he's doing through the experiences, he wants you to count it Joy. Amen. Now, let's, let's move on. <clears throat> so he's calling out to those 12 tribes that he still loves, letting them know that I'm still here for you. The church of Christ has come into existence. I've been trying to walk with you. Not trying. He has been walking with us. But, but they've been the ones who called the couple of weeks journey to last for 40 years. Right. But even in that, he was still good to them and made sure that the shoes that were on their feet for 40 years didn't wear out. Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and none of them have made a shoe that that's good. But God had the shoes on their feet that last for 40 years. And then the clothes that was on their back, even though they was hard-headed and, and obstinate and difficult and just stiff-necked and rebellious, the clothes that he had, that they had on their backs, he didn't even let the clothes wear out. 
Yeah. And there's not a suit made. Jones, New York. Yeah. There's not a suit made. Right. Ralph Lauren. There's not a suit that's made. Polo. There's not a suit that's made that I know can last and stand up to 40 years of wearing it and it never wear out. Amen. But God brought them over and kept them going. Didn't the two make it over, by the way. But God kept them and sustained them for 40 years. He's been loving us the whole time. And so now Christ is on the scene. The church is on the scene. And even though they were punished and scattered throughout the nations, he still loved them enough to have James to write a letter to them, encouraging them to stay in the ship. Now tell me that ain't some love. That's some love right now. <clears throat> so now he's going to tell us the book of James. As we set the context for this, is a book now that's going to teach us how to now behave in the church of Christ. Mm -hmm. For those of us that made it over into the promised land, for those of us that made it over into the kingdom of God, the book of James is a book <clears throat> to teach us how to behave and act when we get in here. Amen. All right. I just want to set all of that up for you. <clears throat> so now he tells us <clears throat> to stop being double-minded. Stop being bipolar and schizophrenic in your faith. You're in, you're out, you're up, you're down, you're hot, you're cold, you're, you're with it, you disagree with it. What, what, what are you? See, right. and, and as a preacher, for somebody that's been preaching a long time, I see what James is talking about here. Right. I really do. Mm -hmm. I see what he's talking about. People are all over the place and scared to look in the mirror and truly look at the source of their problem and it's them own self. Right. They want to blame everybody. They want to blame the preacher. Oh, I'm going to get it either way I go. It's always something wrong with me. And I say, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired. Can I just explain myself yeah, for a minute? Yeah, I'm tired of everybody being mad at me all the time. Right. You got somebody mad with you all the time. And if you really look at what I've been doing as a preacher, it ain't been nothing but to try to help make people's lives better. Amen. But somebody going to be mad with you all the time. And I said, Lord, this is my personal conversation with him. Lord, give me the strength. Give me the strength. Because when you have to share with people and help hold boundaries and to set a standard, Right. As a preacher, my job, as we are reading, right. some of us are just now coming into the knowledge, and we've been reading this Bible a while, right. of what he's teaching this morning Amen. in the book of Timothy. Paul was charging Timothy, the preacher, to set the standard, right. be an example of the standard, yeah. promote the standard, teach the standard, charge the standard. Right. And you know what? And in that book of Timothy, as we go through it, you're going to see what Paul had to share a lot of things to get Timothy to see that people are something else. They are going to buck, buck, buck like a hard-headed, stubborn goat right. and mad with stuff that then over time they come back and say, well, you know, what he was trying to share was right. right. Let, me, let me charge you with this. Right. Come back and say, to me. Preacher, you know I was upset with you, but I lived long enough to see that what you was telling me, it was right. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Have enough sense within yourself. Have enough strength and transparency and integrity within your own self to come back and tell me, brother, I was wrong. Amen. Amen. But that's not the way this happens. See, when, it, when, when you become convicted, when people become convicted in what was being shown Oh, no, they want to keep it a secret then. Oh, uh, he was telling me right. Mm -hmm. No, be honest. Right. But that's not what people do. No, no, they don't. So, but anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. As a, as, a, as a leader of men, as a leader of grown folks, old folks, and young men, right. I wouldn't be much of a leader if... I'm teaching young men to get up and speak and present themselves 
And while they got them, their hands stuck in their pocket, trying to deliver a message. Right. My job as a leader, as someone who's a public speaker, I make money off of what I do. Right. People call me to come and present myself. Right. right. And are glad to pay me. Right. Now, what would it look like with me having these skills? And I'm trying to train young men right. how to deliver a presentation. And I see him with his hands in his pocket. Can I, can I use you, baby? You can. And I don't teach him any better. What kind of leader is that? That's right. not a leader. That's not a leader. Right. And, but you know what I love about, I'm using Brother Isaiah here for an example. When I shared with him to take his hands out of his pocket, he said, oh, OK put his hands on the podium, kept going with his lesson. Right. Now, my little nephew, parents, I'm talking to you, and I'm not condemning you. Preach, man. I'm just teaching. Preach. Right. It was another little fella who was standing up there during the singing, and he had his hands in his pocket, and he all over the place, all over the place. And I said, take your hands out your pocket. Take your hands out your pocket. He gonna look at me, take his hand out of his pocket, and then say, oh, what am I now, security guard? I told him you got one more time, and I'm telling this from the pulpit, right. to be that disrespectful, and I'm gonna tear your look in up. Amen. And I'm saying publicly to the parents, teach your children, right. and train. Amen. Because see, whereas it's Brother Bray, and Uncle Greg, who's teaching them in love today. Right. right. It's going to be somebody else teaching them tomorrow. And as soon as they pop off that little smart mouth, somebody's going to knock their teeth out. Right. Right. Or a policeman going to have beat him to death. Right. Right. Train your children in the way of the Lord. Amen. Right. And teach decorum and respect for adults. And that stuff is not funny. Amen. And for people to sit back and be laughing and think it's cute, I'm telling you publicly, there's something wrong with you. Amen. We act like we don't have no sense. We don't lost all sense. Right. And let me tell you something. I was brought up. I was brought up under instruction and old folk teaching and knowledge and respect. I was brought up in that. Right. I'm not fussing. I'm just teaching. Right. I was brought up to respect Grown folk. Right. And while, let me show you another teaching um, um, as I'm going through here. Y'all yeah. don't mind, do you? No. So while the, the, this young man got up to speak publicly, the order was given. This is no condemnation. This is identification. Right. right. The order was given for, for the other young folks to come out and start taking up plates and forks and spoons and so forth. And it was carrying on a racket. And it was also a bunch of racket back in the kitchen going on. Now let me ask you a question. If it was your child out there speaking that was presenting himself for the first time, would you want all of those distractions going on while your baby is delivering a message? All respect. It's about respect. Yes. Yes. And so therefore, I just gently went over and told the young man, he didn't mean no harm. I said, let's get this after the man has finished speaking. Right. He said, yes, sir. And he sat right down. Oh, right. Amen. You see, as a preacher, as teachers, as leaders, right. if you're going to have an organization that's worth anything, right. You're going to have to, first of all, put forth the example, and secondly, you're going to have to have the stamina to stand there and make sure that the standard is set, held, and adhered to. Amen. 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 And if you can't do that, sit down and get out the way and let somebody else Amen. that comes along can. Amen. Amen. Amen when you can. Amen. Amen. You see, this is what James is teaching. Right. He's teaching the church to have standards. Yeah. Right. He's teaching the congregation 
that you know what? You're going to go through some trials, some tribulation. But I also want you to know how to behave right. in the church. Right. Let's go a little bit further. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But the rich in that he is made low because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. See, he letting you know that in the church you're going to have high degree folks and low degree folks. And I'm not talking about education. You're going to have people that come from different walks of life and different backgrounds. But Paul, uh, James, is teaching us in the church that know how to treat the brother of low degree. Right. And you that have high degree, don't hold your head up. Be somebody that people can reach out and touch you. Amen. Right. And that's the example that I've left here with you. You have. I'm some of everywhere in some of the highest places in the state of Alabama. Right. But you know what I do? I allow myself to be touched by you. Yeah. Verse 11. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth away, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Amen. He's letting it be made known that you're going to be tried, mm -hmm. you're going to be tested, yes. and you're going to have to endure temptation yes. on this Christian journey yes. and while you're in the church. So now he's going to go on and explain the process of sin. See, most people who don't understand it, when they've given their life over to the Lord, and they have all good intention, but then when temptation comes their way, they mistakenly assume that they are a bad person or that they are in sin because of the temptation. Right. No, ma'am and no, sir. That's a Jedi mind trick. Right. Right. Teach us. Amen. So Paul, or James, I keep saying Paul, James is making it clear. No, don't beat yourself up because you are tempted. And, and don't have your mind spinning that you are not saved or a good person or a good man or woman because you have to wrestle with the crazy stuff that enters in and out of your mind. What James is saying, listen, no. You cannot keep foolish, crazy thoughts from coming into your mind. Amen. Right. So quit trying to fight it. See, that's what run people crazy. Stuff come through their mind that's crazy. Satan will go to bed with you at night. He'll wake up with you in the morning, and he'll tempt you all through the day. Amen. So what you have to do is, wait a minute, come to an understanding. No, it ain't nothing wrong with me. And some people who do not understand what's going on. This is a spiritual warfare, which is why you have to come and get spiritual training. Amen. But if you don't understand it, then people will lose their mind trying to get out of their head what Satan is entering into their head. Amen. No, you don't, that's not yours to fight. Right. Mm -hmm. So quit, quit trying to fight. You can't fight it. And as they say, it's just like a bird. Or thoughts are like birds that flies over the, head, over the air. <clears throat> you cannot stop the birds, I don't care how much you don't like it, right. from flying over your head. Right. But you can stop it from landing and building a nest and living there. Amen. That's what power you have. Yes. So when Satan comes and he brings all of these crazy thoughts. The Bible said Jesus was in the wilderness. Tempted by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. Yes. And everything you see man dealing with today. Everything. Don't leave anything out. Go back to the book of Leviticus. Read over there about all of the things that the Lord said that was a sin and abomination to him. Satan brought it to him. Right. When you get over to the book of 1 Corinthians, 
when you speak about some of you are whoremongers and idolaters and infeminine and so forth and murderers. He said, and such were some of you, but now you are washed. The point I'm making with that, Satan brought that to him. Right. Amen. So I'm just laying it out for you. Stop allowing yourselves to be beaten to a pulp of trying to get something out of your head. Right. No, just continue to live and do what's right by God. Amen. Amen. Let Satan rest on one shoulder because you can't stop him. Right. And let the Lord rest on the other. Amen. Amen. Let them do the battling it out of whatever they're going to do. And you go on and keep doing what right. you do. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm, teaching, I, I'm teaching you a, a deep lesson there. Right. <laughs> Let's go a little bit further. So now he says in verse 13, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Mm -hmm. But every man is tempted. See? Every man. Jesus was tempted. Every man was, is tempted. Every man. That's the man from the pulpit. That's the man in the Presbyterian or the bishop role or the elders role. The deacon is tempted. Women are tempted. Old folks are tempted. Young folks are tempted. Everybody. Right. James said is dealing with temptation. <clears throat> when he's drawn away. Now here it comes. Don't let your lust or desire mm -hmm. cause you to be drawn away when you are tempted. Don't let it pull you in. This is where you're going to have to have some discipline. Right. right. Coming to church and all of that is great. Come to church. But when you come to church, you need to acquire something very crucial. Mm -hmm. And if people don't acquire this Thing, they are not going to be successful in anything. Right. And that is discipline. Yes. You're going to have to have discipline right. when you come in your walk with the Lord. Amen. Don't let the temptation just suck you out into it because you have a desire to go do it. Right. Then you become enticed. And then when the lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Now you, now that's when you get in trouble. Amen. Right. Not just because you are tempted. Right. See, see, James is writing to the tribe that have been scattered and making sure that they get this good understanding and all this good knowledge in me. Amen. Now, let's come on down. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of light with whom there is no variables, neither shadow of turning. Now, why does he have to bring that point out? <laughs> because remember, he's teaching God's children to know the difference between the, the good things you receive or the so-called good things you receive. In other words, you see, he's making the distinction here that Satan may provide you with some things that you want. Amen. <clears throat> he may provide you <laughs> with jobs, mm -hmm. positions, money. He may provide you some things. And, and, and none of us need to be naive into thinking that Satan doesn't provide people with things because he does. When he took Jesus up under that high mountain and tempted him, he said, all of these things will I give you if you'll bow down and worship me. But how are you going to give them to the person that takes the deal? Well, that part is hidden. Don't ask too many questions. You just come on and yield yourself to me. And then you'll find out later. You see, you can't know about these things until you get in it. Huh? See, I can't tell you, brother, what this organization is all about until you get in it. <laughs> and when you get in it, when you've sworn yourself in it, when you've taken the oaths and the pledges and went through the rituals and the secret handshakes and, and secret feet 
stances and, and all of this nonsense and witchcraft and demon worship. That's what you're in right. if you don't know. Right. And it's nothing but a sense of pride thinking that you have something that nobody else has and it makes you a bigger man or a man because you're into something and you can throw a sign. No, what you are in, what you have done is taking the mark of the beast and you're on your way to hell. That's where you're going. Amen. I didn't stutter when I said it. Amen. The book said that when all of those, when he came back, that took the mark, on their hand and in their forehead, he cast them into the lake. Yes, he did. With Satan and his angels. Amen. So you don't have nothing, man. I'm looking at you. You don't have anything that is of any value or worth. But when you come and obey the law, yes, he said, I want you to know yes. that every good gift yes. coming down from the Father of lights, and whom there's no shadow, neither Bearableness, no turning, every good gift. Perfect gift. Amen. And every perfect gift, thank you, yes. coming down from the Father of lights. Well, it may take a little longer to get, mm -hmm. but baby, the, the results last a whole lot longer. Amen. Amen. Easy come and easy go. Amen. The Bible tells us that when we get things from a, an unrighteous standpoint, they come fast, yes. mm -hmm. but it goes fast. It goes fast. So it is best to get it the right way. Amen. Of his own will, verse 18, he begot us with his, the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, you're going to have to do something now when you yes. are in the church, yes. when you are in your newfound walk with me. You're going to have to be swift to hear, mm -hmm. slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Yes. Yeah. Some of us in here still have to work on that. Yes. Yes. And that's from the pulpit to the pew. Yes. Quit being so eager to get mad about stuff. Right. Yes. Go back and do an inventory and a checkup from the neck up right. and to see who you are and why you're getting mad so fast right. about something that's right. Right. Can I help you? Yes. I'm going ahead and preach it now. You see, stop looking to get mad with the preacher all the time. Stop looking to get mad with the preacher's wife all the time. Stop looking to get mad at God all the time. Stop looking to get mad with the word of God all the time. I didn't write the book. I didn't write the letter. My job is simply to put it in the box. Now, in verse 20, let me tell you why this is no good. Because when a person is getting mad all the time over nonsense, yes, he, the wrath of a man worketh not the righteousness of God. Amen. See, you, you, see, you, see, you have to check yourself. Right. Why, why are we getting so upset so quick? Right. And especially, check this. You know why I changed my style up from, and I still quote a lot now. But you see why I purposely put my head in the book and start reading it? Yeah. I do that personally. I do that purposefully because some people don't have enough spiritual awareness within their walk. They want to say Greg said it, and I'm quoting it word for word, walking it down. But, but I say to myself, no, you, you know what? <laughs> I can quote it. Yes, sir. But I'm going to go to the book and put my head down and read it so you can see it's coming out of the book. Amen. Now get mad with him. That's it. So therefore in the church, he tells us to do something. When you find out who you are, for one, James had to do a history lesson. The writer of Hebrews had to do a history lesson. To get them to go back to see who they were, where they come from, who the promise was to. He had to give them a history lesson and walk them up. Now James, God has James writing the book to tell them how to behave. Amen. 
And, and for those that are doing the right thing, keep doing the right thing. And just know that you're going to fall into the devil's temptation. Right. Yes. Just know that Satan right. is not the giver of good gifts. Right. Just know that it is God and God alone that gives every good and perfect gift. Amen. Amen. But you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to be wise. Amen. You're going to have to learn to be swift to hear. Slow to speak and slow to wrath, for the wrath of a man working not the righteousness of God. Amen. And so now he gets down to this part where he says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Listen. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man that beholdeth his natural face in a glass, and he goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, it is this man that shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. See, it is this man that when you get in the church, you that have been scattered throughout the world, right. now that the letter is making it to you, when the letter makes it to you, understand that you're going to have to depart from some filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Yes. Superfluity means an overabundance of filthiness. Right. Yes, I told you that God's children always had to battle through idolatry, witchcraft, and all that stuff. Right. So when you stay in context, they not only had gotten indoctrinated in it, they had become superfluous in it. They had took it and started doing it better than the devil. Right, so James is saying, listen, now that Christ has come, he came for you, but he came to his own, John 1 and 11, and his own received him not. And you know what? Going back to what Brother Alex was saying this morning. He said he told Boo, Boo, I'm going to tell you this time, and this is my last time. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's man. Mm -hmm. That's man. But when we go back and read the Bible, mm -hmm. look at how loving and long-suffering and repetitive God is and Amen. was, mm -hmm. and even after they killed him, yes. he said, still has love to have his manservant to write a letter to these hard-headed folks that he told who was going to be scattered throughout all nations. He still had James to write him a letter of love. Yes. That's love. And so he's telling them again. This is why I always ask our teachers and when I'm teaching, teach the lesson. Do a good job. But I'm listening. And I'm listening for not only content, I'm looking for context. Right. Right. See, this is the context. Now, <clears throat> so now, he says, now, when we look in this mirror, he's telling those 12 tribes, it's all right to come to church and Bible class. It's all right to read your Bibles. That's good. It's all right. But when you read this Bible, when you look in this mirror, it's something that it, you are supposed to do after you read it. Not just read it and then forget what it says and continue to go and live and do like you want to do or like you've been doing. It is to read it, see the standard, be reminded of the standard and change your ways and do what Lord would want for us to do. Amen. 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 James, Jesus knew what he was doing when he had James to write this because this is still prevalent today. Amen. There are a lot of people who just want to read it. Mm -hmm. Some don't even want to read it. They just want to hear it. They be, they're like the people over in the book of Ezekiel. They told Ezekiel, man, you preach so good, you sound like a pleasant song. Yes. But you keep on reading it. Let me, let me go ahead. Let me show you.
Go to Ezekiel 32 or 3 or so. And the lesson is going to be yours. <clears throat> go to Ezekiel 33. And I want you to go to verse 31. Do I have a read already? <clears throat> Ezekiel. Let me know when, I, when you had a place. Amen. Ezekiel 33. Okay, you're there? Yeah. All right, you're there? I want you to read it. Walk with me with it. I want you to put on your preaching voice with it. <laughs> in Ezekiel 33, in the verses 31, the book says what? Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of, of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a, a, a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coat. Isaiah 33, Ezekiel. What did I say? Ezekiel 33. You got it. Verse 31. And they come unto uh, thee as there the people There we come. go. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. Read. And they sit before thee as my people. And sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words. And they hear thy words. Read. But they, but... They will but they will not do them. do them. Read. For with their mouth, for they, with their mouth they show much love. Much love. But their Read. Heart go with but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Read. They have a and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. Read. That has a pleasant voice. That has a pleasant voice. Come on. And can play well, and on, can an play well on an instrument. For they hear thy word. For they hear thy word. But they do not. But they, but do, they do them not. Amen. Read. And when they come to pass. And when this comes to pass. Lo, yeah. and it will come then shall free. They know then they shall they know that a prophet has, has been, been among them. them. Amen. Mm. Amen. God said, I know what I'm dealing with when I'm dealing with people. Yes. These people are going to say how much they just enjoy the word, <laughs> how much they enjoy the sermons. Mm. God said, I already know what you're going to say. He says, but it's not about you just simply hearing the message, reading the Bible, and enjoying it. It's about you hearing it and obeying it. Amen, Amen. Amen Wall. Amen. Amen. So this is what he's telling them over in the book of James. When he says, but verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, it is this man that shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. And if any among you seemeth to be religious and rightly not his tongue, his this tongue. man's religion is in vain. Now, this is why, but he deceives his own heart and his uh, religion is in vain. Now, the deeper context, when you continue to read James, now, bridle your tongue in by words. <laughs> bridle your tongue in swear words. Yes, bridle your tongue, but that's not that's, 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 a, that's a simple application to that. Sure. The deeper application to that is when you, you have to read the whole book through. Mm -hmm. And the tongue they were using, they were using that tongue to curse man. And man God. Curse. Now, now think about the word curse. I didn't, yes, sir. I, I'm not talking about using a by word. Right, right. No, no. What were they practicing? Mm -hmm. They were practicing idolatry. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. See, this is why I tell you, you got to stay with the context. Yes, and they were looking to put uh, spells or curses on people. Right. The Lord said, you can't use your tongue to curse people and then bless people all at the same time. Sweet and bitter water cannot come out of the same fountain. Amen. See, this is the context. Not just whether you hit your nail and say it a D word. Hit your fingernail with a, a hammer or something and something jumped out. Bridle it on that too. But it, this is going deep. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and then verse 27, and the lesson is yours. Pure religion. 
and undefiled before God and the Father, this is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's chapter one. Amen. So God in his love is reaching out to those 12 tribes that even after the church of Christ came into existence, he's still sending out letters of love even after he punished them with having them scattered out throughout all the nations as I showed you on the map when they fled over into the Atlas Mountains right. and they, the promise of Luke went into effect and they were sold throughout all the nations as slaves even after him keeping his promise. I tell you, if people are lost, they want to be lost. Amen. Amen. He's got all the love and mercy in the world. And compassion. And compassion. Yes. Now we're going to go all the way through the book of James. Amen. But before I got to James, see chapter one makes a whole lot of sense to you now. Yes. Because we went through and set the context and the parameters for the lesson. Amen. Amen. So now you see just how loving of a father and a savior he is. Amen. He sent out letters. And we're going to get over into James chapter 2, 3, 4, and so on. But James is telling us how to behave in the church. Luke 13 told us to repent, right. change our ways. Y'all, I want to say to you as I close, the Lord is still calling us. That ain't almost it. Up close to it, just about it. That's it. That's it. If you are not a member of the Church of Christ, you need to be. And for those that are listening, there's not but one church that you can read about in this Bible. Amen. And see, when you understand this Bible, you understand this is why the Catholics made it illegal for people to read this Bible. Right. When you understand this Bible, you understand why they burn people at the stake for reading this Bible? When you understand the Bible, you understand why they totally abandoned the book and went over and wrote their own book called the Catechism. When you understand this book, you understand why the Jews put this book down and then went over and wrote their own book called the Talmud. When you understand this book, you understand why the Mormons put this book down and went and got the Book of Mormon. When you understand this book, you understand why the Muslims put this book to the side and went and wrote the Quran. Yes. When you understand this book, when you truly understand this book, you understand why the devil wants to invalidate and discredit the rock of ages. You understand why he wants you to put this book down. Yes. Because this book Tells us the word of God, yes. the mind of God, yes. the intentions of God, yes. God's plan. Yes. It tells you all about man, where it come from, who created it. Yes. It tells you where he's going for the good. They're going into heaven right. for the unrighteous and the ungodly. They're going into hell right. when the Catholics were going and enslaving God's people. Yes. They say, you know. It's going to be hard for us to convince the people 
that we're spreading Christianity with the tactics and the brutality and the enslaving and the killing and the oppression that we are hoisting upon them, it's going to be hard for us to convince them to our form of Christianity when the very people who we're going and colonizing, Jesus looks like them. Right. So therefore, we're going to have to do something. Yes. I tell you what, we're going to paint a picture and we're going to spread this image right. throughout the world. We cannot keep this book from going forth because we tried. But God had some of the very people who were trying to keep this book from going into circulation to end up printing the book on their own printing presses right. and spreading it throughout the world. Amen. So what they said, well, we'll take and draw a lot of pictures in it. <laughs> and we'll put pictures in it so that when they see these pictures, they will not see themselves. Right. And they will see what we want them to see. Right. Right. But when you read this book, you got to open up and get the treasures and the jewels out of it. Right. In Isaiah 34 and 16, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Right. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. It is this book that the devil don't want you to know. Amen. That ain't almost did up close to it just about it. I'm so glad to be a Christian. I'm so glad to be in the church of Christ. I'm so glad. Amen. Amen. You need to come yes. by hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized. Give me your hand. Give God your heart and give your life to Jesus. While together we stand and sing, won't Amen. you come?